Hello, I am Nick from Story Productions. We are a production services company based in Sao Paulo in Brazil, and we help international productions happen here. We assist productions from news, uh, corporate films, feature films with research, logistics, crewing, casting, and last but not least, post-production. We have just assisted a crew from ITN who have been over to Brazil to cover the COVID story. Today, I would like to uh, welcome Rob Turner, staff cameraman at ITN. Now, this is the second part of our interview. In this part, we're going to get into the nitty gritty detail of equipment. And my question to Rob, Rob, what kit did you bring to Brazil for this mission? So, um, uh, the people that work with me uh, know that I'm uh, famous for bringing a lot of kit with me. So, on this trip, I traveled light. Uh, so, no steady cam, no cine slider, only one case of lights, only one case of lenses. So, for me, this was light. So, the kit that I brought with me into Brazil was my bag of uh, prime lenses. Um, a servo zoom lens and two other lenses, the 16 to 35, 2.8, 70 to 200, 2.8. I've just moved over from Canon glass to all Sony glass because the FX9 has incredible uh, cinematic autofocus. Uh, and when you're shooting at very, very narrow depth of field in an interview, to be able to switch on the autofocus and as your interviewee leans forwards and backwards, you're not having to chase the focus and this thing does an, an incredible job of that. So that's why I've, I've got some Sony lenses. The prime lenses that I use aren't particularly the expensive ones, uh, but they're very good. Um, T1.5, so they're very, very quick. Uh, really, because it's a cine um, housing, the the travel of uh, focus is very long, so that it's very accurate. So, end up using having to use that on a on a follow focus. Um, I always keep a, a, a map box on the front of the camera, and in there normally, I would say ninety percent of the time, lives a uh, 0.6 ND grad in a rotating tray. So you can, from my view, there's always part of the frame that you wish you could exposed for differently so as you slide around the the grad to to darken even if it's just always left in the sky it just helps keep the definition and keep the depth in the shot um what else have we got uh good set of radio mics uh i use sennheiser digital receiver um this is the mic that i'll give to the reporter another sennheiser mkh60 uh with a good Sennheiser uh, plug-on transmitter because you you can't have cables uh, when you're filming in all these sort of uh, contaminated areas. So it's important you give the microphone to the to the reporter. It stays with them. That's their responsibility. It's their set of germs to carry around. Uh, and uh, so you know you need to be able to rely on your audio equipment because you're only going to get one chance. So that's very good. Uh, sorry, Nick, here's a, this, I love my little Shaw in ear um, monitors. They're fantastic for filming with great sound quality. But the problem is when you're in your PPE and your full suit uh, in a contaminated area, you can't be taking your hood down and on when you're in there to, to get the headphones and you can't have a cable between you and the camera. So you have to be able to monitor the sound. So it's been a, a, a long search for me to find wireless uh, headphones that I can use with the camera that are in sync with uh, reality because normally the Bluetooth headphones there's a delay. And so there's nothing more distracting than seeing reality out of sync. So these little things are excellent. So I, plug a transmitter onto the camera and I have this in my pocket with my headphones all in and then I put the suit on, goggles, everything. So wireless audio monitoring is, was absolutely crucial while in the, in the hospital. Um, 
filming through PPE. Uh, I've seen all kinds of different uh, combinations of how you would how you would film while you're wearing all of this gear. Uh, normally they give us these uh, sort of goggle of a visor when you go into the really contaminated areas. Uh, but the problem is you can't get the viewfinder close enough to your eye and then these things will start to steam up because of the air coming out of your top of your mask. Uh, so it's impossible. So we give the producer, the fixer and the reporter these because they give very good protection and they're actually very comfortable. But I found that I needed something very clear, optically very good glass to be able to see uh, see into the viewfinder and because these don't seal completely around your face they don't steam up uh, and I was able to, to film in these so these were just um, ordered on the internet as some very good quality protective eyewear and they don't need to seal all the way around your face because the protection that these are giving you is from splashes coming into your eye so that's how these stop you from getting contaminated um, FFP3 masks uh, the disposable kind, we don't want to start worrying about changing canisters and wiping down uh, respirators. These give you the, the same protection, they're full FFP3, they're small, they're lightweight, they're pretty comfortable. So for filming in contaminated areas, it's this and the eye protection and a suit. I'm not sure if you can see that, so it's the full uh, body suit with a hood. You want this to be loose and baggy if you're a camera operator because it needs to be too big because as soon as you move your arm or you bend down or you bend over, you don't want your sleeves or to, to pull so that the seal's gone off, your hood to come back. So if you're choosing a suit to film in, in contaminated areas, make it bigger than you need. Uh, two pairs of gloves, uh, one pair of gloves on under the suit and then you seal the sleeve onto your, your other glove with, with, the, with the top layer. So lots of disposable gloves came with us. Uh, shoe covers, because you don't want to have to throw away your, uh, your shoes every time you've been somewhere contaminated and you don't want to take any contamination into the hospital. So these things just slip over your shoe and throw them away. And then this is probably the most important bit of kit that I carry with me at the moment. It's hand gel and I'm just using it all the time, all the time. Every time you touch something, every time we move somewhere. So that's the that's the main thing. Uh, oh, and then I talked to you earlier on about uh, wipes. So this is what I wipe the equipment down with. The Clinel uh, full antibac 99.99999% kill rate. Uh, I was very worried to start with because this is, you know, my baby and I don't want to start wiping off the labeling, damaging the camera. I don't use these on the front uh, of the lens because I don't want to take the coating off the lenses. So I, I use a, a, a lens cleaning spray uh, to clean the front of the camera. But every other part of the camera, every tiniest little bit gets run through with these wipes and they're very good. But a note on any of these wipes is that once you've wiped over the surface, it takes 60 seconds for it to dry and that's then when it's clean. Uh, I have to wipe the tripod down, the mic down, you know, everything. Did you bring all of this kit from the UK? Yep, everything came with us. So I bought, to, to go over my concise kit, my bag of prime lenses, my bag of zoom lenses, my audio kit, which is a one wireless stick microphone and two wireless clip-on mics. Uh, the Sony FX9, uh, Sashla Flowtech tripod, which is excellent. They're very lightweight, very rigid. Uh, all the producers and the reporters like them because there's a handle that they can carry it. Uh, I brought a one large uh, roll-up LED panel with a, with a diffuser on it to use as a key light. One LED dado light to use as a backlight or fill um, and an edit kit and that's very lightweight for me. Can you talk about the choices you made in terms of uh, shooting format? Just reminding our viewers that Brazil is a country wide at an electric fr frequency of 60 hertz. 
the format that I always prefer to shoot is, um, no, let me start that again, because it's not the format that I prefer to shoot, it's the one that the company need me to shoot. So the, the format that uh, ITV News requires me to shoot is 50i, um, because it's fast turnaround, we need the file sizes to be reasonable, they need, we need to be able to push them over IP, um, uh, you know, and all that kind of thing. So the thing about shooting a 50 hertz format in a 60 hertz country is that the light, any artificial light will flicker. And the way you get around that as a cameraman is you put in a shutter speed of 1 60th. Uh, and then the shutter matches the um, local uh, electricity rate, the refresh rate of the lighting. Uh, and that's how you get around that problem. So if you're shooting um, 60 I in the UK, you would set your shutter speed to 1 50th so that the shutter speed matches the, the refresh of the um, local electricity supply. So there's no need, there's no need to shoot uh, 60i just because you're in a, a 60 hertz country. You just have to make sure you apply the correct shutter speed. I think we've covered a lot here. Um, is there anything else you would like to mention? So anytime we travel outside of the European Union, um, we have to travel with a a document called a carne, which is a list of all of the equipment that we're taking out of the UK and, all, and a list of all the equipment we're taking in to our host country. Um, so when I leave the UK, a customs officer goes through the list and checks that I've got everything with me. Uh, and then when I arrived in Brazil, a customs officer goes through the list and checks that I've got everything, I'm bringing everything with me that I say I'm bringing. And then when I leave Brazil, I have to get that checked again so that the customs officials can say, yeah, all of the equipment he brought into the country, he's taking out again with him. He hasn't acquired himself a nice new camera while he's been in Brazil that he's taking out and not paying any tax on, or he's not sold a load of equipment while he was there uh, or whatever. And then when I get back to the UK, again, I need another stamp on this form from the UK customs officials to say that yes, all the equipment I took out with me originally has come back. So that is a, a bureaucratic process that a lot of uh, production teams will be used to doing, but it definitely applies when coming to Brazil. So you need to make sure that all your carne paperwork is is in order. Thank you so much for your time, Rob. Have a very safe flight back to the UK, and we really hope this helps. Now, if you want to come to Brazil, do not forget, do get in touch with us. Story Production is your local team in Brazil. Mm -hmm.